the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld His glory, glory as of the only begotten Son from the Father. And from His fullness have we all received grace upon grace. Greetings, this is Father Sam Moorhead, Rector of the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, and with it also, Pastor of St. Elizabeth of Hungary on the Auraria campus. We've come to the fifth Sunday of Lent. We're looking forward to the concluding time of Lent, of Holy Week, and Easter is on the horizon. As we begin this Rector's Report, today let us begin a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, as we begin this traditional Passion Time, Help us to experience the grace of sharing most deeply and intimately in Jesus' redemptive suffering, his death, and his resurrection. Pour out abundant graces upon each and every one of us, our family members, our friends, the community around us during these last weeks of Lent. And help us to experience through our participation in the church and her sacraments, the celebration of her mysteries, our own keeping of penances and prayer, the new life that you have in store for us in Christ. May Mary Immaculate pray and intercede for us all and all of our needs. And so we turn to the Virgin as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, as you and I head into this new week, we do celebrate the last few weeks of Lent, this is traditionally called the Passion Tide, and you will notice if you come to the Cathedral Basilica in the next two weeks, beginning with this weekend, that all of the statues, the crucifixes, the images of the saints, the other holy images have been veiled over. The church herself enters into a time of deep asceticism, the mortification of the senses. We're preparing to die, so to rise with the Lord. It's a stark thing, so be prepared as you come down to the Cathedral Basilica to see that which you so normally enjoy and helps you enter into prayer, even that obscured, as we head into this holiest time of the year. Speaking of that, a couple reminders about the events that are on um, docket for our celebrations here at the Cathedral Basilica. Holy Week, of course, begins a week from now with Palm Sunday, all of the normal Mass times on Palm Sunday. Then on Tuesday of Holy Week, we will have the Chrism Mass here at the Cathedral Basilica. That features the Archbishop present to bless and consecrate all of the holy oils for the new year. We will also have the presence of most of the priests of the Archdiocese of Denver to renew our priestly promises. That Mass is Tuesday of Holy Week at 11 a.m. And everyone is welcome. The parking will be atrocious, but you are still welcome to come down if you would like to join us. It's something beautiful to behold. And then we have the Sacred Paschal Triduum, begin with Holy Thursday. The Mass of the Lord's Supper will be here at the Cathedral Basilica at 5.30 p.m. at 7.30 p.m. over at St. Elizabeth of Hungary. Then on Good Friday itself, well, I should mention before we speak of Good Friday that after the Mass of the Lord's Supper, we will have a Eucharistic waiting, a period of vigilant waiting and watching with the Lord, just as the disciples were bid to do in the Garden of Gethsemane. So you can come to the Cathedral Basilica for the Mass at 5.30 p.m., but then we're going to have a time of watching and waiting and praying with our Eucharistic Lord all the way till midnight. Then, on Good Friday, here at the Cathedral Basilica, we have solemn stations of the cross at noon. There will be confessions from noon until before 3 p.m. At 3 p.m. is the liturgical celebration of the Passion of the Lord, where we have the readings, the intercessions, the veneration of the cross before a simple act of Holy Communion. Over at St. Elizabeth of Hungary, noon is when that liturgy is to be had. Then, back here at the Cathedral Basilica, on Holy Saturday, so the vigil of Easter Sunday, the 30th of March, we will have the first Mass of Easter, which is the Easter Vigil Mass, the longest, most beautiful Mass of the entire year. It begins at 8 p.m. here at the Cathedral Basilica. 
In the course of that Mass, which includes the blessing of the Easter fire, the readings from the Old Testament as we keep vigil, the rite of baptism and confirmation for those coming into the church, and then the celebration of the Mass itself with these persons holding First Holy Communion, all of that kicks off at 8 p.m., the Easter Vigil Mass, on the Saturday evening before Easter. 8.30 p.m. is when that Mass is over at St. Elizabeth of Hungary. And then on Easter Sunday itself, as we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord, we have all of our normal Mass times here at the Cathedral Basilica and over at St. Elizabeth of Hungary. As we head into all of these celebrations, just a reminder to our young people, those 18 through the end of their 30s, that we're having a young adult Lenten Bible study each Sunday evening after the 6.30 p.m. Mass, so at more or less 8 p.m. in the cathedral basement, accessible through the double doors along Logan Street, down to the basement. That will be this weekend and next weekend, Palm Sunday, as we look forward to the celebration of Holy Week and Easter beyond. Speaking of celebrations, this weekend, the church would celebrate, if it weren't a Sunday, but we can still celebrate in our hearts the feast of St. Patrick, the great patron saint of the Irish, or to the Irish, St. Patrick's Day is, of course, obscured by the Sunday, but the Knights of Columbus have kept um, the celebration this Saturday at the Knights of Columbus Hall. Persons came up after the parade, and uh, great joy and merriment was to be had with that. But beyond that, this Sunday, so thus the 17th at 3 p.m., we have a special presentation from the Holy Family High School Orchestra and Choir, a beautiful concert that helps us head towards Holy Week and Easter beyond. So a warm welcome and invitation to everyone to come to our uh, concert this Sunday at 3 p.m. So we have so many wonderful events from, in front of us right now, things to help us celebrate this time of the year. Just a couple other notes. This coming week on the 19th of March, we will have the Solemnity of St. Joseph, the great uh, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the foster father of Christ himself. It's so great a feast, it's a solemnity, and that by its very nature sets aside any fasting or abstinence that we would do on that day. You might even consider coming to Mass. A normal feast that we also would have in the month of March is the Feast of the Annunciation, which is normally on March 25th. Also so great a solemnity, it sets aside fasting and abstinence. But because the 25th of March happens to be within Holy Week, the whole solemnity of the Annunciation, of, of Christ, of, to the Virgin Mary, the whole solemnity is moved to the Monday after Divine Mercy Sunday. So that will be April 8th. That's when the great solemnity of the Annunciation is moved to. Other than that, and looking forward to all other things, just one last plug. We are very much in need of couples who have been already married seven years or more who would like to invest in young engaged couples to help prepare them for the sacrament of matrimony. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to have any special classes or degrees. You don't even have to have a perfect marriage. All you have to have is a willingness to help build up, promote the good of the family moving forward. Not this weekend, but next weekend, we're going to have a special brunch here at the Cathedral Basilica in the basement for persons throughout the Archdiocese who want to be mentor couples who help invest in and serve to build up the domestic church by working with these engaged couples. If that interests you, or if the Holy Spirit's tapping you on the shoulder to help out with that, even if it's a couple times per year, call in or write into the Cathedral Parish Office and talk to Isabel. She is our coordinator for all things marriage prep. She'd love to have RSVPs so that we know how many persons are coming to our marriage prep brunch next weekend on the 23rd of March in the morning. Well, that's our update for this week. As we begin the Passion Time, as we look forward to Holy Week and everything beyond, as we conclude this time together, let me offer you a prayer and a blessing. The Lord be with you, and through the intercession of our blessed and holy Mother Mary, may Almighty God bless you and yours, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all and have a wonderful week in front of you.